Good morning. Hi, my name's David. I'm the chaplain at Peabody Retirement Center in North Manchester. So the good news is we have a 1.30 uh, service that starts a series of services in the afternoon there. So the good news for you is I have to get out of here quickly because I'll be nervous about getting there on time. So um, we'll begin with the call to worship. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to God and worship him. Oh. 
court called a confession is drawn from 1 John. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God together. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Through the humble birth, obedient life, suffering death, and shining resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, God has forgiven us. Christ is risen. Christ reigns. Christ reconciles us to God. By grace, we are forgiven. We are restored. We are loved. Friends, believe the good news. of responding to the virus is that you get to hear Ms. Rogers lead the singing for the entire congregation. Uh, my younger daughter asked me, Dad, do you have to lead singing when you do worship at the retirement communities? And I said, yeah. And she said, haven't they suffered enough? <laughs> Let us pray. Oh, together I see, sorry. Oh God, touch us with the glad light of your truth. Gather us into the good news of your word and sanctify us through the blessed challenge of following our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Um, I follow the lectionary. These are two of the readings that the church worldwide uh, will be using today. Psalm 138, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down to your, toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, God regards the lowly, but the haughty 
God perceives from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The next reading is a well-known reading from Paul, 2 Corinthians 4. I'm extending the lectionary reading a bit today. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be clear that the extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be visible in our mortal flesh. So, death is at work in us, but life in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, quoting, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, Everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction, is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what, at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, what cannot be seen, eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. I was struggling with this sermon, and I looked up inner renewal on Google, the magic device for looking things up. And the results came in in a flurry. And now I have all sorts of new ads attacking my computer. The results came in for massage, some new style of therapy, and a memory foam mattress. All sorts of quack, natural, homeopathic treatments are now showing up on the computer. They promise to renew youthful vigor for those who complain of no energy but rarely seem concerned about pursuing anything that takes much vigor. When I was in seminary, I would get frustrated that I could read a little bit of the Gospels, but that Paul I found very difficult. If you want to hear John get on a good rant, ask him about taking Greek at summer in Vanderbilt and how they burned their Greek books after it was done. Well, one of the reasons is Paul makes up words. The word renewal he invented for his purposes. He draws a sharp distinction, outer 
going downhill, inner renewal. What he's trying to do is go beyond appearance, that we live an Easter experience of renewal and resurrection, even in the face of death, every single day we're given the gift of life. Paul starts with this famous expression, we live, we have these treasures in earthen vessels, jars of clay, clay pots. That was the packaging, the plastic of the ancient world. Some of the pottery was artistic and careful and beautiful and placed only in the homes of the rich or in a temple or in a public gathering place. The Dead Sea Scrolls were placed in clay pots. Broken pieces of pottery were used to teach people how to write. It was the note paper of the ancient world. You would even send a letter scratched out on the back of a broken piece of pottery. The best example we would have would be the clay pots we grow flowers in. Beauty exists there but so fragile, a sharp blow, it comes to pieces. The word, uh, let's see, now even though I work, so well, let me rephrase that, um, because I work at a retirement home, this feels like I'm talking to a youth group here, so I'm really enjoying this, but some of you are old enough to remember that in the days before computers, a lot of us had a book called Roger's Thesaurus when we had to write. And that was a desperate attempt to make your English teacher happy. Even though sometimes we used words that we weren't sure what they meant. Uh, I still remember a kid um, when I was teaching that was using his thesaurus and he, the way he wrote his story was, oh no, he ejaculated. <laughs> now, I was raised Catholic. I know what an ejaculation is. It was a short burst of prayer, but... In our more vulgar word, we don't think that way. But Roger's thesaurus meant a treasury of words. And that's what Paul says we have. Treasure in these clay vessels. Going all the way back to Adam and Eve. Adam being formed of the Adama, of the soil and what treasures we have. Now I have an issue with Paul here because he could be taken wrong. He speaks of troubles as a slight momentary affliction. We all know that as soon as people start playing the game of comparing trouble it's always to downplay the trouble of somebody else. When we get in that game of comparing, my troubles are always far deeper than yours. But this is a rhetorical move because what he's using as the word slight or light is the opposite of what he wants to emphasize, the weight the gravity, the pure force of God's grace. And he's not downplaying what people suffer, including himself. Look at those words. Afflicted, uh, perplexed, probably better, utterly baffled, struck down. 
This is a remarkable litany of hardship. A litany of what we go through in life. So he's not underplaying troubles, but he is saying that what we go through can be born, can be carried when we keep the promise in mind. Being able to speak of affliction is itself a critique of, of affliction. And yet, the Spirit works in and with and through our lives in these clay vessels. Even if we are broken vessels, God looks past the appearance and sees the treasures that lie within. So Paul says... We do not lose heart. That's the root of the word courage in English, of course. And they are always good words to hear, but perhaps especially good words as we age. Outwardly, we are not what we once were. Against all appearance, appearances to the contrary, our eyes are set beyond that. So much so that when we look ourselves in a mirror at a certain age, you're almost surprised to see the face of a grandparent looking back at you. Because inwardly, we are renewed every day that if we're asked, how do you feel? 19, 22, Appearances to the contrary. Well, how do I look? Oh, 30. We are renewed, even physically. Every time we heal from a cut, we're being renewed. Inwardly, we're being renewed physically so that our Stomach lining, for instance, is renewed every few years completely. Every day we make new connections within our brains. But Paul is more concerned about how we're being renewed in our hearts and minds and spirits. Part of that vision is heaven, a place where resurrection will have us together with God. But what does daily renewal look and feel like? Is it being able to let go and even bury the past that afflicts us? Is it having the strength and courage to face the new day and not giving up, but keep on keeping on? I often say that a sign of acute depression is when it takes an act of real courage and will merely to get out of bed in the morning. No reason for it other than the dark dog attacking. Paul is not giving the heresy of the health and wealth of gospel that has animated Christianity for many, many years, but seems to be particularly potent right now. The Joel Osteens of the world who promise nothing but good. I do not know what world these people live in, but the psalmist knows a lot better that we live poised between trouble and joy between the good and the bad all the time. The psalmist is thrilled that a prayer has been answered. The desperation was met by redemption by the very hand of God. But then almost in the same breath, he says, Oh God, you are so high up 
but you regard the needy. Don't forsake the word of your hands. Life is hard. At the same time, it's so good. We possess spiritual, emotional, mental treasures that allow us to face the good and the bad in life. We have the gift of memory and the gift of forgetting, the gift of short-term and long-term thinking. We live poised between transience and the eternal. On the other hand, good times seem so fleeting and suffering makes time go so slowly that we know what eternity must be like, where the clock itself stops and it makes time go as slowly as math class in the sixth grade when we all know the theory of relativity because time seemed to have stood still. No matter our age, no matter our condition, life does begin anew. We are renewed to face what life brings us. We may even burn out, but we don't rust. But God constantly renews as well. We do not reboot ourselves like a bulky computer, but God can, and God does. I'm not using the word revival here. Trying so hard just tires us out and distracts us from what's important and discourages us when we fail. We are eternal beings but we've lost sight of living in eternity. We spend time and energy and money on our physical needs, but we neglect that inner renewal that's given us as a gift every single day. And our misplaced efforts leave us feeling powerless and detached from God. But that's not how God intends it to be. We're meant to be in a relationship with God and others that's dynamic and whole and fresh every day. We are people who are swallowed up by life. And we know that when our days here are ended, we will live embraced, ensconced in the very life of God. Amen. We move to the affirmation of faith. If you're able, please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I'm not quite sure how to do this. Does anyone have a particular prayer, concern, or joy you wanted to share today? Life is perfect. Okay. Let us pray. Dear God, always and everywhere, we begin these prayers by giving thanks. Giving thanks for the treasures that we have in these earthen vessels, in these jars of clay. 
memories that extend almost back to our li- at the beginning of our lives, imagination that helps us to picture the undiscovered country, the future. We are temples of your presence. We are vessels of grace, vessels of love, vessels of care and compassion. Reach out your hand to us who are needy. For those who are in pain, comfort them. Ease their pain. We've been given the scientific miracle of a vaccine against this plague. May we avail ourselves of it. But just as importantly, ease, give clarity to perplexed, confused minds. Give us guidance. Ease hearts that are afflicted, worried, and troubled. Lighten our load. Help us to bear our burdens together. Lift up spirits when they become downcast. Remind us that every single day we are being renewed by you. Through your spirit. Through your grace. Yes, through your love. In all these things we pray. And we close with the Lord's Prayer saying together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Clay vessels are made by human hands, but our clay vessels are touched by the design artisan. May you see yourselves as divine masterpieces. May you treat each other as divine masterpieces. Know that treasures untold Treasures yet undiscovered 
lie within each one of us and are made as we interact with one another. Go in peace this day and every day, secure in the knowledge that we are well made by the Creator of all. Amen.